So we are going to talk about the definitions of closure, boundary, and interior in topology. Now all three of these definitions rely on the idea of two points being close to each other. So we have to have a way to measure how close two points are. Now one way to measure how close points are is to define a distance between two points. And then we can say that two points are close to each other if the distance between them is small. However, topology takes a more general approach. Instead of defining a distance function, we use something called open sets. Now, open sets have to satisfy some special properties, but we don't really have to worry about those for now. What matters is, once we have these open sets, we can say that two points are close to each other if there are a lot of open sets that contain both of them. So if we have two points here, we might have some open sets that look like this, and then another one that looks like this that's smaller, or we might have one that just goes around one of the points. And the closer these two points are to each other, the more open sets there will be that contain both of them at the same time. So now that we have that idea, we can start to talk about the closure of a set. So let's say we have the number line from positive infinity to negative infinity. That's kind of our underlying set here, that's the ambient set. And then inside of the number line, we have the interval from negative three to three. Now in this set that we're looking at here, we include all the points between negative three and three, and we include the point negative three, but we don't include the point three. Now if we look at this set here, the boundary of a set is kind of the edge of this set. It's the stuff that sits at the very outside at the edge. So if we look at this set right here, the boundary points, the points that are at the edge, seem like they should be negative three and positive three. Now in this case, negative three, this first point on the boundary, is in the set, but positive three is not. The idea of the closure is that if we have a set, let's call this set A, the closure A bar takes the set and it also includes the boundary points. So in this case, the closure should be the set from negative three to three, except we do include that point positive three on the boundary. So the question now is how do we figure out which points are on the boundary of the set A so that we can include them when we take the closure? Well, let's think about this point positive three here. This point isn't in the set, but if we look at the points around here next to three, we can get really, really close to the point three by taking points inside the set. Because near three, we have 2.9, we have 2.99, we have 2.999, and so on. And all of these points are in the set A, and they're getting really, really close to three. In fact, we can get as close as we want by taking numbers really, really close from the left in our set A. So it seems like the points on the boundary are points where if we look inside of our set, we can get as close to the boundary as we want by taking points inside of the set that get closer and closer. So how can we describe that not using the idea of distance but using the idea of open sets that we want for topology. Well, we said earlier that two points are close to each other if there are a lot of open sets that contain both of them. So let's say we have some open set. We'll call it U. And this set contains the point P where P is some point that's on the boundary. Well, if we have this open set U, two points are close to each other if they're in the same open set, and we can get really close to points on the boundary inside of our set A. So if we can find points in our set A that are really close to the point P, that means that they should be in a lot of the same open sets as P. So eventually, if we get close enough, we should be able to find a point in this set A that's also in the open set U, that set that shares the point P. So we want to be able to say that if there's an open set 
that contains this boundary point P. There exists some point in the set A that's also in the set U. So in other words, this point is in A intersect U. So we have an open set U. Two points are close to each other if they're in the same open sets. So eventually we should be able to find a point in our set A that's also in this open set U because that means that this point is really close to that boundary point P. And if we're looking at a point on the boundary, we can get as close as we want. So this statement should hold for every single open set. So we should have that for every open set U that contains P, there exists a point that's in A and that open set U at the same time. Because that means that this set A is getting really close to P because this set A intersects with every single open set containing P. So this statement right here is actually the way that we define the closure of a set. So the closure A bar that we're looking at right here, this set plus the boundary, we define this as the points P such that this condition is satisfied. If this condition is satisfied for a particular point P, we call that point P an adherence point of the set A. So the closure of A is just the set of all adherence points of that set. Now you might ask, okay, we know that the points on the boundary satisfy this condition. Do the points in the original set A also satisfy this condition? Well, if P is in the set A and we have some open set containing P, we can find a point in A intersect U because we can just take X equals P. If P is in A, and by definition U contains P, then P is in both A and U, so P is in A intersect U. And that means that every point in the set A is automatically an adherence point of A, which means it's in the closure. So this set right here contains all of the points in A, but it also contains all of the points on the boundary. All of the points where no matter what open set we pick, some really small open set around that point, there's always something in the set that's close enough to this point that it is in the open set too. So now we know how to find the closure of a set A, which means that if we're given a set, we know how to include all of the boundary points. But what if instead of including the boundary points, we want only the boundary points? Well, this closure tells us which points are in A or in the boundary of A, but it doesn't tell us which points are in the boundary of A. So if we're looking at this set A right here, the boundary is the point negative three and the point positive three. Those are the points that are on the very edge. We don't want any of the points on the inside, we just want the points on the boundary. How can we figure that part out? Well, here's the thing about the points that are on the boundary. We know that if we have a point on the boundary, like this positive three here, then we can get really, really close to this point three by staying inside the set A. But if we look from the other direction, if we look at these points over here that are not in the set A, we can also get really, really close to the point three by coming from this direction outside of the set. So if we consider the complement of the set A, that's going to be this red region on the outside here, we can get really close to the point three by taking points in a complement. And similarly, we can get really close to negative three by taking points in a complement. So if we think about the boundary of A, which we denote using this notation, this means the boundary of this set, we can get close to the points on the boundary of A from the side of a complement as well which means that the boundary of A is the same as the boundary of A complement. So we already know how to find the closure of A, and that's the set where we take A and we include all of the points on the boundary. And we also know how to find the closure of A complement because we can just use the same thing, take all of the adherence points. So this gives us A complement 
union the boundary of A complement. But we know that the boundary of A complement is the same as the boundary of A. So we have a method to get A union the boundary of A. And we have another method to get the union of A complement in the boundary of A. So how do we just get the boundary of A from these two? Well, what if we take the intersection? The closure of A intersect the closure of A complement. Well, A and A complement don't intersect at all, because by definition, A complement is just all the points that aren't in A. So these two are not going to intersect, which means that the only intersection is going to be at the boundary of A. So the intersection of the closure of A and the closure of A complement is exactly the boundary of A. So since we already know how to get the closure of a set, we can use this to figure out a formula for the boundary. So now we know how to find the closure and how to find the boundary. The last thing we want to find is the interior. Now the idea of the interior of a set is that we take the set and remove everything that's on the boundary. So in the case of this set A, the interior of A would be the open interval where we don't include 3 and we don't include negative 3 because those points are both on the boundary. So how can we find the interior of a set if we already know how to find the closure and the boundary? Well, the first question is, what is the closure of A complement? Well, we found earlier that the closure of A complement is A complement union the boundary, but the boundary of A complement is the same as the boundary of A. So this is the formula for the closure of A complement. So if we look at our example up here, the closure of A complement would be all of the red region here outside of A, and then plus the point negative 3 and the point positive 3. Those are also going to be included in the closure of A complement. So now the question is, what if we take the closure of A complement and then we take the complement of that? Well, in this case, the closure of A complement is these boundary points, negative 3 and positive 3, plus all the red region outside of the set A. So if we take the complement of that, it won't include the points negative 3 and positive 3, because those are in this closure. But it will include all of the points on the inside here, because those points are not in A complement, since they're in A. So this complement right here is going to include all of the points on the inside of this set A, it won't include the boundary points because those are in this closure. And it won't include the points outside of A because those are in A complement. So this complement right here is going to give us only the points in A that are not in the boundary. And that, by definition, is the interior of A. So we can get the interior by taking the closure of the complement which gives us everything outside the set and the boundary points. So if we take the complement of that, it'll give us everything inside the set except not the boundary points because those are in the closure. So these are the formulas for the closure, boundary, and interior. And you can see that the closure really plays a key role because the boundary and the interior can both be defined just in terms of the closure. And we have a formula for actually finding the closure of a set using these adherence points. The idea of adherence points is really important, and it relies on this idea of open sets from topology, which gives us a way to say whether two points are close without having a distance function.